and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a video that has been requested by a lot of people both online and offline for a while and it's just sort of a hair care and styling routine video but also a chat about colored hair specifically my experiences with red colored hair. A lot of you have also asked me some questions because I asked you guys if you had any questions on Instagram so I'm going to answer all of them to in the video. If you have been wanting to color your hair, I hope that this video will be helpful to you. Every product that I'm going to mention in this video, I will also list in the description box. So do check it out. I've been asked how long have I been coloring my hair? So not very long, that's for sure. I had colored my hair once when I was 15 or 16 with a box like a pack that you get in the supermarket. I wanted to do something different so I did that and I never colored it after that. In December 2014 which is last year I got the opportunity through Lakme Salon to get a cut and color so that is the first time in a long time that I had colored my hair and my hair was like technically pretty virgin before that. Virgin in this context means that your hair has not been like chemically treated in any way. You haven't got it colored, straightened and it's just your natural hair. So whenever you do any kind of chemical treatment, be it hair color or rebonding, it's always going to look really nice when you do it on virgin hair. Because even if your natural hair, you think that it's not so great in texture, it's still not damaged. So any chemical treatment, the first time your hair is going to look really good. But if you keep doing that treatment again and again, uh, yeah, your hair will start to look and feel possibly a little more damaged. So you need to take extra care of it. This is how my hair looked after it was freshly colored just one week later. That time we had done like a global deep red color and this section here was first bleached and then put a very bright vibrant red that was what was done in December and then this is how my hair looked in April around my birthday time I did not get my roots touched up or anything so you can see a significant amount of roots and most of the red hair color sort of faded to leave a sort of a light coppery brown I loved having red hair but all hair color is not created the same red is one of the colors that fades the fastest every time you wash a lot of it is going to come off so then from December the parts that were colored here really vibrant red they faded the fastest and there was like a bleach blonde color left behind so obviously it was not looking nice but I always had the idea I wanted to color my hair purple so I bought the purple color luckily I got it on Amazon India and I think it's also available on eBay but it's a lovely lovely color and it is completely natural, it's made of vegetable dyes, will not damage your hair at all. And the only problem is that of course your hair needs to be bleached for purple to show. But the purple that I have here, I am not sure how visible it is right now. But uh, when I'm outdoors especially, it's a lot more visible. The way that it was placed is that it was placed a bit underneath. So that's a little peekaboo and when I curl my hair also a little bit of the purple is visible outside. I do it about every one and a half month. I have the big tube of hair color and I have not even finished quarter of it because I need like a little bit each time and I just apply it with a dye brush, put on aluminium foil and keep it on for half an hour, one hour, even two hours if you want. I haven't done that but you can even sleep with it as long as you put a shower cap or something. It doesn't have any harsh chemicals in it. It's not going to burn or spoil your hair in any way. Then just rinse it out and the purple is very, very vibrant. It starts out a very dark, inky blue sort of purple and it goes down to a lighter color and to sort of a light lilac-like color. So it fades also beautifully. Uh, so the purple, I color at home myself technically with a lot of help from my mother because it's difficult to kind of see and color your own hair and it lasts quite well. So back to now the global red color, I decided that I wanted to color my hair red again. So I went back to Shefali because I had a really good experience with her when I had gone through Lakme. So now she has become my hairstylist and I really like going to her. I've recommended quite a lot of my friends to her. <laughs> this time I thought that I would go for kind of a deeper, more subdued red, but when it got done, it was very, very bright. I shot an outfit post right after that, it was bright, 
sort of berry red and I didn't even expect it to come out that red but it's just that it, it caught onto my hair faster and brighter because my hair was previously colored and was previously lightened with that color. For those of you asking me what shade hair color this is, I don't know because I get it done in the salon so they just show me the book and I don't know the shade number but I know that it is Schwarzkopf Innova colors. If you go to a good salon, they'll show you the book and you can discuss with your stylist and see what kind of hair color you want. It always helps to take in photographs for a haircut or hair color to your salon. So some of you were asking if my hair is bleached even right now. No, this is not bleached at all. I think it is about three weeks now since I've gotten it colored. So it's already kind of like become a little less vibrant. And whenever I wash my hair, the water when I rinse my hair, it runs light pink. At least in the beginning, it was bright pink. Now it's light pink. Now I'm going to talk about the products that I use both for hair care as well as hair styling. So I am not loyal to one particular brand when it comes to hair products. I like to experiment just like with my hair. I like to try a lot of different brands and I know that some brands are better than the others but I use them all. I use drugstore brands and I use high-end brands, everything. So I just don't stay with particular products for long. But since I've colored my hair, I have had to be a little more vigilant about the products that I use on my hair and have to take a little more care both because it's chemically damaged so I don't want it to dry out and I do not want anything too harsh to wash away this color. I think it's incredibly important whenever you've colored your hair to use a color safe shampoo and conditioner because you're spending the money, you're taking the trouble and then you use a harsh shampoo or conditioner like that's not color safe, it's all going to wash out, it's all going to go away and you definitely don't want that. Dandruff shampoos are a very very big no when your hair is colored because dandruff shampoos are known to be the harshest possible. So if you want to go in to color your hair and you're having a little dandruff, try and treat your dandruff before you go to color your hair and if you realize that uh, you have dandruff when your hair is colored, try some natural remedies such as neem oil. Neem oil works very well for dandruff and all. Just do not use dandruff shampoo because it will wash away all of your color. Now since I got my hair colored again, I have been using the Color Goddess range from TG. Bedhead by TG is like a brand of professional hair colors and I like that their whole mantra is all about playing with your hair, having fun, using products, experimenting with your look etc. But the reason that I have chosen these particular products right now is just that they have two different ranges for colored hair that I really liked because again all hair color is not equal. They have one range for if you highlight your hair or color it blonde and this range the color goddess is especially for redheads and brunettes and it just helps your color stay nice and vibrant. It locks it in, it doesn't let it wash away and it also kind of repairs and improves the texture of your hair and makes it nice and soft. I like shampoos and conditioners that smell really nice, who doesn't? But this range it actually smells like toffee and when I say toffee I don't mean just like a faint toffee fragrance I mean this smells completely edible and I love it so so much <laughs> ladies if you have anybody in your life who likes smelling your hair as weird as this sounds I'm sure that this will make them even happier because it smells so nice this is a pump bottle so it's pretty liquid in consistency I take about one to two pumps in my hand it depends really and then I work it onto my scalp I think it's always important to remember that shampoo is meant for your scalp and it's meant to cleanse your scalp. You don't really have to apply it on the hair that much because if you're like massaging your scalp nicely with the shampoo, even your hair will get cleaned. So just concentrate on the scalp and you do not need to put it on the whole of your hair. And then later I go in with the Color Goddess Conditioner. This also has the same fragrance obviously and this is a nice really thick rich consistency like cream so it's sort of like a hair mask like that and this I just apply a nice amount of it 
and I work it into the mids and ends. Now it's also very important to remember again this is a tip not just for colored hair but for all hair. Never ever ever put conditioner directly on your root area on the top of your head. Don't do that. It will probably cause a lot of problems for your scalp. It can lead to additional dandruff. It will make your scalp greasy really fast and it will also make all this hair that is near your scalp lie flat on your head and nobody likes that because everybody wants a little volume here so this is something that even i learned just two or three years ago but please do not put conditioner on your scalp ever just work it into your mids and ends because that's where the moisturization is needed and after all of the product has gone from your hands after you worked it into the ends nicely then you can just run your fingers through the top of your hair and your parting area just to make it smoother Another really useful tip if you have colored hair is that hot water also makes it go a lot faster. So try to use cool or lukewarm water to wash your hair. After I'm done, I kind of just use a towel to remove the excess water from my hair. Towels aren't so great for your hair. And if you have the habit of taking the towel and really ruffling your hair with it, that's going to cause more problems because that just creates more static and frizz. So I try to keep towel usage to the minimum and just use it to remove the excess water that is dripping off the ends of my hair. One more thing that you have to be kind of careful about when you have red hair is especially when it's wet, it's going to kind of run and come off onto your clothes or any other fabric. So don't go to sleep with wet hair or it will stay in your pillow cover. It does stain towels, especially if they're white. So try using dark colored towels. Even your clothes, like light colored pajamas and all, it's going to stain the collars. When it's dry, it doesn't come off on anything. I still wear white t-shirts, so that's not any problem. After that, I go in with the leave-in products. Right now, I like using two at the same time. One cream and one oil. So with cream, I'm using the new Garnier Oil-In Cream. This is quite a nice product and I feel like the cream does soften my hair and make it very nice and manageable. So I put a dollop of this in my hand and again just treat it how I treat the conditioner. Work it into the mids and ends and then just run my hands to the top of my hair. Next for the oil product, I like using this Organics Hydrating Macadamia Dry Styling Oil because again this makes my hair feel very smooth and it adds a little bit of shine. So I like it, I'll take a little bit of it and use it much the same way as I use this. I really like this product because it is similar to Moroccan oil, like really similar. I've used Moroccan oil as well and I think it's about half the cost or maybe less than half, I don't know. It's a really nice product. I don't really use combs on my hair that much because I like a little volume and combs cause my hair to go very flat and they separate my hair too much so I don't love combs. I use hair brushes most of the time. This is the hairbrush that I'm using currently by Kent. It is the Kent KS48 hairbrush. And I don't even remember when I bought this. I just told my mother once that I'm going to buy a hairbrush and she was like, no, don't buy a hairbrush. I have this in the cupboard and it was in the cupboard brand new. So thanks mom. I thought that I would use this hairbrush only till I get around to buying a new one, but I ended up really liking it. It's nice quality, this plastic is really hard and this brush part here, it can actually come out. Here, I'm sliding it out. It can come out fully and uh, you can wash this section of the brush. Right now I'm a little embarrassed because it has got some of my hair in it. I haven't cleaned it recently, but I'm going to show you. You can take it out and you can wash this, which is why I really like this brush. And it also works very well with heat. If you're drying your hair, it works great. So I'm a big fan of this brush. I even used it in my get ready with me video, the travel one in Coimbatore. And I think some of you asked me which brush it is. Next, I almost always blow dry my hair. Now this will be a kind of a controversial thing because I know a lot of you guys think that heat is not good for the hair. And I agree with you, in the long term, if you use a lot of heat on your hair, it can be damaging. I find that my hair reacts very quickly to humidity. So I like blow drying it because I feel that that cuts down on the static and frizz a lot. And the heat also adds a, quite a lot of shine to my hair. And definitely overall, blow drying my hair makes it look good and it makes it keep looking good till the next wash because I don't wash my hair every day. So I'm showing you guys this blow dryer. This is not mine. It's just for reference. This is some random brand. 
cheap blow dryer that is there in the room right now because I'm traveling. So any blow dryer will kind of work just as well. At home, I really like using the Philips Kerashine one. So if you will recall, I've done a review of the Philips Kerashine blow dryer. It is the most popular video on my channel. So I find that these kind of uh, simple, small travel blow dryers work well enough for me. I even bought a really expensive, fancy professional dryer at home, but I actually don't love using it because it is so big and so heavy, it's difficult to manage. These small, cheap ones on the other hand work just as fine. The only con that I find is, yeah, they do take a little extra time to blow dry your hair. So for my hair with this length and thickness, I think it takes about 10 minutes to blow dry it fully. So how I blow dry is that I don't hold the nozzle too close to my hair. So that also causes a lot of damage. I just rough blow dry and it works very well for me. I just hold the brush on top and the sides, keep a lot of distance and just roughly blow dry your hair. And don't worry if it seems like your hair is getting messy because uh, you can just comb it out and it's going to look really nice. And rough blow drying minimizes a lot of the damage. I can pretty much leave my hair at that point but I really like wearing my hair in curls recently so I'm gonna go ahead and curl it. The current uh, curler that I'm using is this Conical Wand by Coriolis. I don't know the full name of the product, I'll put it down below but it is a really nice wand. I think I saw a wand similar to this by Tony and Guy on SE Buttons video and I wanted something similar so I bought this one. It works really nicely. It goes up to 190 degrees centigrade which is very hot and that is nice if you want really defined curls but for my curls I keep it at something like 150 degrees centigrade. When I first started using this I felt very clumsy with it. I think I burnt the tips of my fingers in minor ways and I also once burnt my neck but now it's become second nature for me. I can do it really quickly and I do not burn anything. Personally, I don't like the look of really well-formed, neat curls. At least I don't think they look good on me. So I like sort of messy curls, sort of textured and beachy looking. So I put it on 150 degrees and I will curl my hair. You don't have to curl like your whole hair so thoroughly. You can just pick sections from the top and curl it and it's not going to be visible that you haven't curled the bottom layer. So I can curl like my whole hair within 5 to 6 minutes flat. Another tip that I found quite useful in helping your curl stay longer is that when you are withdrawing the wand from the curl, don't just let the hair fall down but just kind of hold the hair in position in that curl for a little while and let it sort of cool there just one or two seconds and that is just going to help your curl stay on a lot longer. So after I'm done sort of curling my hair, I'll wait a little while for the curls to kind of drop a little and I'll even run my fingers through them so that they look a little more open and textured and messy. And then I'll go in with the L'Oreal Elnet Satin Extra Strong Hold Hairspray. And I finally realized why everyone says this is the best hairspray in the world and it's used by professionals because it just feels really nice. It's very light, it gives a very strong hold while at the same time it doesn't leave too much of that rough waxy feeling in your hair. So it's a really good hairspray. The last product that's part of my regular styling routine is this L'Oreal Techni Art Fresh Dust Dry Shampoo. Since my hair is coloured, I like to try and go a little longer between hair washes. But when my root area starts appearing greasy, I use this dry shampoo. This is definitely not my favourite dry shampoo. I don't love it because I've used Batiste and Batiste is so much better. Uh, this one doesn't work so well but I'm making do and I'm using this one right now. All in all, that was my entire hair care and styling routine and all of the products that I'm using right now. I know that uh, red coloured hair is a little bit more high maintenance but I really like having it so I'm willing to do all of these extra steps for now. So thank you for watching this video. I know it ran a little bit long but I just wanted it to be as detailed and thorough as possible. If you like this video or found it informative then please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions leave them below and I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. 
subscribe to my channel by pressing that big red subscribe button if you'd like to see my videos in your subscription box and i'll see you in my next video bye